Picture the most powerful wind turbine you know. Now strip off the tower, wipe away the concrete base, and lift the whole thing three kilometers into the sky. There, where the wind screams so fiercely it would shred a normal turbine, China is about to park the first megawatt-class airborne generator the planet has ever seen. It looks like a silver blimp wearing propellers, and in a matter of weeks it'll start sending clean electricity down a single cable thinner than your finger. 30 times punchier than any flying wind tech to date, this thing could redraw the energy map faster than Tesla rolled out superchargers. Why we even need a flying turbine? Let's be blunt, conventional turbines hit a wall when they hit the beach. The shiny new offshore monsters top out around 15 megawatts, but each one costs roughly a Gulfstream jet, needs its own special ship, and still only works in water shallow enough for a skyscraper-sized pylon. On land, neighbors complain about the whoosh at 200 meters, barely tall enough to tickle the lazy winds that skim hillsides. Capacity factors plateau in the 30s, meaning the blades loaf around two-thirds of the year. Meanwhile, 30 kilometers overhead, the jet stream is up there doing an effortless 50 kilometers an hour, every day, on every continent. Until now, we simply didn't have a machine light enough to shake hands with it but tough enough to stay alive. Meet the S-1500 Enter the S-1500, cooked up since 2018 by Beijing SAWES, Tsinghua University, and the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Think 30 meters of helium balloon wrapped around a carbon fiber wing, with eight feathering rotors bolted on. Each rotor spins a tiny permanent magnet generator, no gearbox, no drama. Juice runs earthward through a Kevlar cord tether sheathed in the same polymer that stops bullets. The same cable doubles as an anchor, a winch reels the craft home for a tune-up, then spits it back up in minutes. Early prototypes hummed at 30 kilowatts a kilometer up. Last month, above Inner Mongolia, the latest beast hit 3,000 meters and pumped out a steady megawatt for six straight hours, first time anyone's crossed the megawatt line in the sky. How this actually works Takeoff feels like watching a sleepy whale wake up. The envelope fills with helium until it's neutrally buoyant, the props spin like oversized drone blades, and up it climbs. Once it's 800 meters up, where the wind doubles, it flips into generator mode. Smart software twirls the blades just enough to keep rotor speed steady while squeezing every watt possible. Need to rise or drop a smidge? Just reel the tether or shuffle helium between the main balloon and a tiny inner bladder. If a storm cell pops up on litter 3 kilometers out, the S-1500 politely descends like a yo-yo. The ground station is three shipping containers on a gravel pad. No cranes, no months of paperwork. Plug it in and the grid thinks it's Christmas. The physics pay off. Wind power scales with wind speed cubed and rotor area squared. At 3 kilometers, the breeze is roughly double what you get at a standard hub height. That's eight times the punch for the same swept circle. The rotors trace a 100-meter loop, giving the little airship the effective sweep of a 300-meter offshore giant. Net result. The S-1500 matches a 2-megawatt tower while using 90% less steel and concrete. Capacity factor leaps from the mid-30s to the high-60s. A single unit powers a thousand homes, 50 could keep a steel mill humming. And when the next hurricane knocks out Puerto Rico's grid, two cargo containers and this thing is back in the sky. Problems they already solved. Tether fatigue was the first villain. Early nylon lasted about 200 flight hours before snapping. Engineers swapped in the same fiber that holds up the fast radio telescope and slipped on a Kevlar sleeve just in case. Lightning? There's a plasma wire that channels strikes straight into the ground station's copper grid. Air traffic rules demanded ads be beacons and strobe lights visible from 5 kilometers, so they printed the entire avionics stack on a flex-rigid circuit thinner than a credit card. Done. Why China is winning this race While Google's Macany and Europe's Ampex chased rigid kites that needed runways, Chinese labs put their chips on lighter-than-air hybrids. State cash poured in through the Ministry of Science and Technology, and years of EV subsidies had already built world-class supply chains for ultralight composites, rare earth magnets, and high-voltage inverters. The final price tag? Around 6 million US dollars per unit. 
half the cost of an equivalent offshore turbine and a tenth the total installed bill. Beijing wants 200 of these hovering above the Qinghai-Tibet Railway by 2027. That's not catching up, that's lapping the field. If airborne wind power goes the way of solar panels, tomorrow's factory jobs won't look anything like today's. So tell us, would you let a silent silver blimp float above your rooftop if it wiped out your power bill? Drop your thoughts below, hit subscribe, and we'll live stream every test flight straight to the first commercial hookup. The S-1500 isn't just a clever drone, it's a wager that tomorrow's energy will come lighter, higher, and faster than anything bolted to the ground. Over the next year Beijing SAWES plans to line up 10 units along the Yellow River like pearls on a kite string. If the numbers hold, utilities from Texas to Tamil Nadu will queue up for their own sky whales. And the face of renewable power will shift from white pinwheels on the horizon to silent silver airships glinting in the sun. Countdowns on. 3 kilometers up and 1 megawatt closer to a planet we can keep livable, no coastline required.